delight to be with you once again in the Lord's house. Hope everybody had an enjoyable week of the beautiful weather. Uh, look forward to today, and then the heat comes back, I guess. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, just one announcement to highlight. Uh, there are now more cards available, the, the youth group cards. There are Father's Day cards there. If you need one of those, try and social distance yourself after church and come in the office and pick one up, or you can stop by this week if you'd like those so those got filled this past week. Otherwise, uh, wonderful day to be in the Lord's house. Uh, our order of service uh, today, uh, our first hymn is 690, uh, Hope of the World. Uh, blessings uh, to each of you this day uh, as we worship our Lord and Savior. Continue with our invocation. Let us stand together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive 
Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue as we sing responsibly the intro. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. Let the peoples praise you, O God. The earth has yielded its increase. God shall bless us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was Let the peoples praise you, O God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we pray. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty eternal God, in the word of your apostles and prophets, you have proclaimed to us your saving will. Grant us faith to believe your promises that we may receive eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
The Old Testament reading for the second to Sunday after Pentecost is from Exodus chapter 19. The people of Israel set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain while Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. And the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 5. For a while we were still weak. At the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God chose his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sin, for sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespasses, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand together as we sing the Alleluia, the verse, and hear the gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. But when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without pay. Acquire no gold, nor silver, nor copper for your belts, no bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor a staff, for the laborer deserves his food. And whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it. And if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, Shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. Truly I say to you, 
it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to the courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. We confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with hymn 571. God loved the world so that he gave 571. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our gospel reading today 
Jesus sending out the 12 disciples. Did you catch that list? You would heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. Sure, they'd, they'd seen Jesus doing these things, but could they do that? I wonder what was going through their minds when Jesus was telling them, you've got to be kidding. We're going to be able to do that. You've got to be kidding. Well, I suppose they were right, if that was their thought. They had to learn what I suppose every pastor has to learn and what, what every Christian has to learn. To get over yourself. It, it wouldn't be them doing these things. For it would not be anything in them that would qualify them or enable them or empower them to be disciples or apostles. It wasn't their learning. It wasn't their scholarship, their leadership, their charisma, their strength, their, their skills or anything else. No, those all have their place. But you see, it's only the power and the authority of Christ that that would or could accomplish these things, healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing lepers, casting out demons. The very power and authority that Jesus had given them. But yes, they, they had to learn. They, they indeed had to get over themselves. They had to get over their doubts and, and their fears and, and do what had been given them to do and have Christ work through them. And so as if to emphasize that point, Jesus continues with that description of how they are to go and what it's going to be like, right? Don't take any supplies, he says. Rely on what you're given. I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. You will be dragged into the courts. You will be flogged. It just keeps getting worse and worse, right? First, here's this list of impossible tasks. To do and, and, and then they're supposed to do it in, in the midst of an impossible situation. I mean, what have we signed up for? Discipleship, it, it never seems so, so deadly. Precisely. For if they are to be followers of Jesus, where are they following him to? To the cross. You see, they too must die. They too must get over themselves. Or in other words, die to themselves so that they can live in Christ, in Him and in His Word alone, relying solely on Him for it's His work. It's not theirs. It's, it's His Word, not theirs. It's His authority, not theirs. It's His mission, His harvest, not theirs. And the less of them and, and the more of him, all the better. And so Jesus sends out the twelve with, with nothing. To, to do what they themselves are unable to do. To teach them that it will be Christ and, and his spirit working and speaking through them. They only need to go. Yes, the word and the power and the authority of Christ. It can do amazing things. It can cast out demons and, and raise a dead person in sin to new life simply through water and, and the word. Only the word and the power and authority of Christ can, can heal those who are, who are leprous and sick with sin through those beautiful words you hear, your sins are forgiven. Only the word and the power and the authority of Christ can make bread and wine, body and blood of Jesus to feed us, to, to strengthen us Christians with the faith and the forgiveness that we need for this life. <clears throat> Only the word and the power and the authority of Christ can, can fill preaching with the power to grab hold of a, of a hell-bent sinner on the road to Sodom and Gomorrah and, and turn them around in repentance. You see, this second Sunday of Pentecost, we, we begin what we call the long green season. Green will be on the altar for the next 20 or so weeks. We'll focus on 
the life of the church and, and the life of growth that the church has. We'll see how we need to rely on Christ. We, the, the priesthood of believers. Because you have been given the task that has been given to all Christians to do. And, and it's similar to what Jesus sent the disciples. It, it sounds something like this. Love your enemies. Pray for those and do good to those who hate and persecute you. Be perfect. Yeah. Be a perfect father, a perfect mother, a perfect son, daughter, husband, wife, boss, worker, friend, neighbor, and citizen. Yeah. You've got to be kidding. We can't do that. Or, or maybe we, we think in, in our zeal, we answer like those Israelites did there at the base of Mount Sinai. You heard in the Old Testament reading, yes, we can do that. We will obey. And then we don't. We don't even come close, do we? We, we hate our enemies. We forget to pray and do good mostly to those who will do good back to us. We demand perfection from those around us, even as we fall far from the same standard. And, and the kicker in the whole thing, that, that despite our sin, despite our failure, how often do we have the audacity to look around, filled with pride, and think, well, I'm not doing so bad. Yeah, that road to Sodom and Gomorrah is a crowded one indeed. You see, we need to get over ourselves. And if pride is to be full of ourselves, then repentance, that empties us of ourselves. Repentance is that road to discipleship that, that takes us to the cross and, and kills us. To confess that we are that bad. We are the persecutors not just the persecuted. We are the wolves who bite and, and devour one another. We are the ones who put people on trial in our own, own courts with, with laws and standards of our own making. And, and we sit as that one man judge and jury. We, we don't drag people before kings. But how often do we take that role upon ourselves? with our condemning thoughts, our condemning words, uh, assuming the worst in others and, and taking delight in our superiority. Yes, it's true that Jesus sent the disciples out as sheep among wolves because he sent them to people like us. Because he came for people like us. He comes to us and gives himself to us. He is the Lamb of God who came into the midst of a sinful world with sinful wolves. He is the one who was hauled before Governor Pilate and, and King Herod. He was the one who was flogged by men and then devoured by death on the cross that in his resurrection from the dead he would defeat all that defeats us. Our sin, our enemy, Satan, our death, all swallowed up in victory. That his life would become our life. To make us wolves into sheep, sinners into saints, through the resurrecting forgiveness of our sins. To be for us what we could never be for ourselves. A perfect son of God. And then to give that perfection to us. A free, undeserved gift of grace. And while some hear this gift of grace talk and say, you've got to be kidding, it can't be that easy. And this is what St. Paul was talking about in his letter to the Romans. That while we were still weak, or in other words, powerless, we were unable to do anything ourselves 
while we were still sinners, while we were ungodly, while we were unrighteous, while we were facing a future of death, physically and eternally, God sent his son. God sent his son who took our place and died for us. Not because we were good people. Not because we were righteous people who needed a little help. Not because we had any redeeming qualities in us. No human reason at all, you see, why someone might do this for us. But, but God does for none of these reasons. He does this because of anything, not because of anything in us, but simply because of who he is, solely because of his love, because he wanted us. And we needed him. And so Jesus came into this world as Adam did. He came to undo his sin. He came to undo his death. He came to undo his expulsion from the garden so that there is forgiveness of sin, life from death, and a home in heaven. This is the gift Jesus sends those disciples to give. This is the gift through which the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All those other gifts, right? the, the healing, the cleansing, the casting out demons, the raising the dead, were not the ends themselves. No, they were simply signs that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. Signs that the forgiveness of Christ was full and complete. Little pictures, if you will. Things that pointed to the resurrection and the new life in Christ. And so those disciples went, following in the footsteps of Christ. And so do we, following in those same footsteps. And, and you know what? The disciples did those things they thought they couldn't do because they were not alone. And as you go, it's the same for you. As you live in Christ and Christ lives in you, you begin to do those things you think you couldn't do. Those things that Christ has given you to do. Helping, praying, forgiving, serving, loving, even to those who sin against you, even to those who hate you the love of Christ living in you. Never completely perfect in this life, to be sure. And so always following in the footsteps of your Savior to his cross, to die and rise with him daily. As often as you need it, repent and receive his perfect forgiveness so that you may grow in faith and hope and love. For that's truly the Christian life. Indeed, follow in those footsteps. Follow in those footsteps again today to your Savior, where he is here for you. To live in him and he in you. To receive the faith, the forgiveness, the resurrection, all you need to live this new life, the, the Christ life that you have been given to live. Indeed, go in his name, go with his strength. Amen. And now may the peace of God, that peace that surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in and through Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen. We continue with him 561, the tree of life, 561.
We continue with our prayers as I end each petition today with let us pray to the Lord. The congregation responds, Lord, have mercy. Let us stand as we pray. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the church and her witness of hope to the world, that in every city, village, and home across the globe, the voice of the Lord may be heard by the faithful preaching of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who labor in the fields of the Lord today and for the Lord to raise up laborers in his harvest fields, that their work may be blessed and that they may be protected and defended against the enemies of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for all who live under the flag of our nation, for those who govern in this country and for the causes of peace and justice, that we may all be given grace and freedom to serve the Lord honorably and in accord with his word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the poor and hungry, the homeless and unemployed and the oppressed, that the Lord would grant them mercy and that they may, relieve, may help to relieve their suffering and want. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have For the sick, that the Lord would grant them healing. For the wounded in spirit, that the Lord would make them whole. And for the grieving, that the Lord would comfort them, especially all those affected by the ongoing pandemic and its effect. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who know the riches of the Lord's blessings, that they may cheerfully return to the Lord the tithes and offerings of a grateful heart and give generously to the many agencies of the church working to help those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh, blessed Lord, through Moses you call the people to yourself, and from them you delivered up your own Son to be our Savior. By his sufferings and death, he has redeemed us sinners from our sins, and by his resurrection, he has released us from the fear of death. Help us to live as your own people, doing the good works for which we were created, and praying with confidence the petitions and supplications of our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, giver and perfecter of our faith, we thank and praise you for, the continu for continuing among us the preaching of your gospel for our instruction and edification. Send your blessing upon the word which has been spoken to us, and by your Holy Spirit increase our saving knowledge of you that day by day we may be strengthened in the divine truth and remain steadfast in your grace. Give us strength to fight the good fight and by faith to overcome all the temptations of Satan, the flesh, and the world so that we may finally receive the salvation for our souls. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. May be seated for our closing hymn, 739. Precious Lord, take my hand, 739.